perp- then I purposely would watch the whole prelude to this guy's podcast. Yeah. Okay, so Johnny Cash mm-hmm. always dressed in black. He did. Because he always related to the uh, struggling struggling uh, individual, right? Struggling American oh, I, people. I don't, know. don't know. I mean, I've been a fan of his, like I told you, since yeah. I was five or six. Yeah. My sister and I used to have, we used to sing every song to his LPs. Oh, really? 33s, the LPs. Sure, yeah. sure. Big get record. Who else used to dress in black? Roy Orbison. Oh, I love Roy Orbison. Now, yeah. supposedly, maybe it's an urban legend, urban myth, why he wore black as well? I heard that whole thing about his wife getting killed on a motorcycle. Or burning in a car or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't uh, know if it's true. Maybe it is. Yeah, you talk about another talented guy, right? Very talented. So, uh, so everybody... Yeah. I mean, so, you know, it just shows you, John, that no matter who we are in life, everybody goes through their struggles, right? So everybody just sees Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, and they say, oh, it must have been peaches and cream for them their whole life because now they're big stars, they're, you know, yeah. movie stars, singers. But that's not really the case, right? I mean... People look at me and go, oh, Phil, you look so, <laughs> you're so successful, which is, couldn't be further from the truth. You must have had it easier. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's been a, a bed of roses. I think no matter what you do in life, yeah. unless you're one of the young adult Rothschilds and you classify yourself as an adventurer because you're playing with a trillion-dollar war chest, you're getting laid left and right. You're young. You're fit. You're probably reasonably good looking, uh, as opposed to the elders in that family. They all look like a bunch of freaks. Mm. Um, but they're adventurers. Yes, adventurers. Mm. They've never held a job. They just go out with hiking boots and and shorts and you know walking sticks, and they they go on adventures. Uh, but Joe, those people, those people, you know, I, I don't know what, the, I cannot relate to them, mm. but no matter what you do in life, whether you're a surgeon, an Uber driver, whether you're a teacher, mm. you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, sure, sure. you have a thorn that is always at the ready to slip itself under you to go right up your ass. John, remember that, that short story fable when we were kids about the lion at the, uh, at the zoo? And everybody was afraid to go near the lion because he would roar and, like, he was out of control. And they didn't know what to do. And then one day, somebody's kid slipped through the gate, made it into the cage. I know I'm butchering the story. But it turns out the lion had a thorn. You just mentioned thorn. In his paw. And as soon as the, the, the child pulled out the thorn... He started licking. The lion was licking the kid like, oh, thank you. Like, you know, and that's kind of like the case in real life. I mean, a lot of people have that thorn that, you know what? Now, what do you do when you have a thorn, John? Maybe that's why that story was so uh, beloved and it it went all around. It went viral. Sure. I mean, it's everybody's got a thorn. So what do you do when you have a thorn, John? Should you let the thorn destroy you or should you learn from that thorn and say, how can I overcome this thorn? Tell me. I think that's a fabulous topic, especially for this podcast, because because what it does is it points to the trials and tribulations of the third dimension in life on this earth, in the flesh, Mm. and we are called upon to alchemize the thorns that stick in us. John, I've I've had a few thorns in my day. I'm sure. You know, and, you know, listen, a thorn will knock you down. A thorn will put you out of commission for a while. A thorn will, it does hurt. Whether that thorn is from a relationship, a job, your health. I mean, it could be anything, you know, that out of nowhere in life comes this thorn and all of a sudden you're upside down in pain, confused, uh, what are you doing? Why did I get this? Or why did this happen? Yeah. And so what do you do when that happens, John? What's your, what do you recommend? I think, I think that, um, well, if anybody thinks that life in, in skin on planet Earth in the third dimension 
if you think it's not the school of hard knocks, uh, then maybe, just maybe, you're an adventurer and part of the Rothschild Rockefeller crew. Mm -hmm. And you know something? I wouldn't trade my life for theirs for all the fucking tea in China. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. You know why? Because we take our life experiences and we take the mastery that we have exhibited over the thorns and the slings and the arrows. We become alchemists in this life. And I believe we have one life after another, and we even have simultaneous lives in different dimensions. But what's the goal? The goal is to reach the highest possible version of yourself, which speaks to the higher self, which we'll do one of these days. But um, life calls upon us to be alchemists. It does, but... Those guys I was talking about, the adventurers, what thorns did I have? What thorns? Maybe they fell when they're hiking and they skinned their little knee. Oh, maybe that's the extent of their thorn. I don't know. Or maybe the old man dies and leaves, you know, 300 billion to their brother, but this guy only gets 200 billion. Oh, there's a problem. Do you ever meet people, John, that, that have a, a current situation or a thorn and it's woe is me, woe is me, and they just start to fold. Like they don't really have fight in them. Have you ever met anybody like that? Oh, for sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What would you tell them? Like, would you try and cheer them up or tell them not to quit? No, what would you I, do? I don't think the answer is to cheer somebody up, uh, unless it's. I think their woe has to be pretty superficial to evoke a response in me where, hey, let me, let me, you know, cheer this guy up. Let's go for ice cream. Let's go for a beer. Let's put some vanilla ice cream in your beer. Um, ice no, cream I, has I, cheered me up. I, right. No, I think it's more than that. And I think, I think I'd probably go into a rant and a conversation about why are we here and have you no respect for yourself? Because if you have no respect for yourself, you probably have no respect for the people around you. Have you ever looked up at the skies when we're going through, uh, like when we have a thorn, and said, why now, why me? You know, yeah, we've all done that. Like, why does this have to happen? What would you tell yeah. people, John, that, you know, that say, oh, why me? Why does this have to happen? Well, I think that kind of mentality mm -hmm. is understandable, but I think everybody's at a different level level of proficiency with understanding what I would call the nature of reality and how we are eternal spiritual energetic beings of the universe we're children of the universe children of the creator we're fractals of the creator and we're living a uh, temporary physical existence and I find that people that sink so low because they can't see they can't see their way through the bullshit it's like you just god forbid dug a 10 foot hole stuck somebody in a casket fully alive shut that lid and lowered them down and backfilled the dirt over them that's a scary thought but you know something for the people who you know there there are three kinds of people one the lowest way of thinking, no matter how academic you may be, no matter how educated you are, those are the people, I don't mean educated people are all low, I'm just saying it doesn't matter how educated you are, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, if you believe that all we are is what's in this skin and nothing more, therefore when your body dies, you're done, you're done, you just, you just cease to exist like the grape that dries up on the vine and then the bird comes and takes it and swallows it down or it falls off and then it's in the dust. That's all you think. So that one third of the population thinks that there's nothing after the death of the physical body. Then there are those who might believe what religion tells us and maybe there's an afterlife and we have to hope and pray for an afterlife. And then there are those in the third category, which I would say would be closest to 
a real spiritual existence in spite of the fleshy body. And they're absolutely sure that there's a whole universe and, and different dimensions out there and that we do our best now in the flesh, but we know, we know what's coming. We know it goes on and on and on. So with those three perspectives, it's really tough to elevate, educate, and enlighten the people who really believe that, that there's nothing more than what's in their skin. But they're so narrow-minded, no matter how educated and smart they are, that then you really don't have much of a choice. You have to start, you, you can't talk about superficial surface shit with them. You gotta dig down to the core. And you gotta say, listen, there's much more to your existence than what you think there is. So when you expand your consciousness and you allow it to grow, which is what love does, because love is expansive and ever growing. Uh, sorry, you cut out. I didn't hear that word. Which word? Uh, I think it started with an L. Love? Oh. Yeah. Well, but it's not the love between two sex partners or, or two boy, a boyfriend and girlfriend or two girls or mm. two guys or however you want to. It's not that. It's, it's, it's the same love that is the greatest healing energy in the universe. It's the energy of the creator, which is loving and expansive and ever growing. So that'll take care of any thorn that people has to believing in. Uh... It, but you have to crack that nut. Mm. You have to get them beyond that myopic view that there's nothing that I am other than what's trapped inside my head and the blood that circulates in my mm -hmm. arteries and veins. If, if you believe that that's all you are, it's a tough road to hoe. Mm. You gotta expand their, their consciousness and say, no, 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 no. We are but just, well, maybe we should talk about the higher self because it's really kind of going in that direction. Considering that there are many, many, many different dimensions. And the third dimension is the lowest dimension where apparently humans exist or the human soul exists. There is a first dimension and a second dimension. The Law of One, which is a fabulous uh, treatise online. It's a book and then an audio series on basically the nature of reality and the nature of, uh, of the universe and foreverness doesn't call the different layers dimensions, it refers to them as densities. And if you understand that we all, in any given dimension, kind of beat and live at a certain energetic frequency, there is a first dimension and a second dimension. Elemental items like crystals and rocks and stones live at the first dimension. The earth is alive. The planets are alive. Sorry, flat earthers, I'm not a flat earther. Um, I hear you and I don't scoff at you, but I'm not a flat earther, so there are planets and whatnot. Second dimension would be the animal kingdom, plants, whatnot, and the third dimension is where we reside. But beyond the third dimension, your spirit, your eternal forever energy goes higher and higher and higher, and it stops somewhere around the sixth dimension, somewhere right before the seventh dimension, which is the dimension that your higher self resides in. Now, if you as a viewer are listening to me and you think, ah, oh, this guy Gallucci, who does he think he is? He's, he's telling us a line of bullshit. No, I'm not. And I'm going to tell you something else. My higher self is my lifeline and it communicates with me almost every day. And I see my higher self. And how does it manifest? When I think something or say something or do something and my higher self is standing there like a loving elder, like a future version of myself and it wants to tell me, yes, yes, behold this moment, behold that thought, yes, you're on the right track. What happens is electric blue sparkles are in my visual field. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm in touch with my higher self every day. That wasn't true for me going back about 12 years. So what I'm telling you is the people who can expand their consciousness and understand that we live in different dimensions 
there are other deities in different dimensions, but we actually reside in different dimensions. The higher self, some would call the Holy Spirit, some would call it God, some would call just, some would call it your higher self. Um, your higher self is literally a lifeline. Your higher self, you can consider it a future version of you, and it's looking back to where you were as a third dimensional being. And why are you here? Why is a fractal of your greater whole experiencing the third dimension? Because you didn't get over certain lessons the first or the 50th or the 100th time you came by this way. Mm. And you got to repeat it. And if you have ever pondered the thought of, how come these certain themes keep happening in my life? How come I keep falling for girls that seem to play the same tune? Even at the beginning when it, it, it seems like there's somebody fresh and new and they're not going to do what the other one did, give it time and it all snakes back to the same bullshit. And now you've got to deal with it. And you're like, wait a minute. I know this game. I know that song. This is the same bullshit. I'm being lied to. They're not being straight with me. That's because you haven't figured out a way through it and around it. Okay, so when we have a thorn... Sorry for that. Sorry, it was, it was tremendous. So when we have a thorn, we look to a higher power. Absolutely. Okay. So how can we get... How can we make... You know, John, do you believe that sometimes we're, people are so connected to a higher power that like a nefarious source, like maybe a not so... An evil power it puts a thorn in your life oh, for some reason absolutely, absolutely to try and distract you and to yeah. try and keep you down and knock you down a few pegs oh, yeah. and to challenge you and to oh, challenge yeah. you so how come people don't look at those thorns as a challenge john and they look at it as a you know woe is me They've been mortally shot mortally wounded. yeah like yeah. something comes out of nowhere which happens to us all mm -hmm. and that thorn gets put in there by evil forces and right away, uh, they what you just explained, like everybody's in control, and then all of a sudden, they, they when it happens to them, they can't explain it or get right. their way out of it. No, I, I would agree. And, you know, it's, um, look, not, not all of us fractalized into our individual personas on Earth. You know, I am who I am. I was born when I was born of uh, mom and dad, and they named me this, and I'm five foot ten, and you know, and this is my life's path. We're all on a different path. And we're not all um, advancing spiritually um, in a homogeneous fashion. That's impossible. There's 7.7 .7 billion individual souls in human form on this planet at this particular time. We are not all at the same level. So you might want to think of it when you expand your consciousness and realize, oh, my God, you know, when I, when I pass, it's really just the beginning. It's not an ending. It's the beginning. You know, like we were the other night at a, at a wake, mm -hmm. uh, a, a common friend, relative. And I really lamented, you know, standing there and pondering him. And I thought, all right, God bless. This is... You know, this is just the, the chrysalis. This is just the shell that you experienced the slings and arrows of being in the third dimension. And God bless you. You're born back into the universe, not, not as a newbie, but you're born back into the universe from which you came. And um, that's, how, that's how I look at what we're going through. So remember all of, the, all of your favorite deities, whether it's Krishna or Jesus, Buddha, Gautama Buddha, Moses, whoever, they're all still alive in higher dimensions. They are. They preceded us, and they're at a higher spiritual level, closer to that, that loving central core than we are. And we'll get there. So, John, if, if we have the higher power on our side, mm -hmm. and a thorn comes and puts us, you know, sets us back a little bit. How come some people want to fight and move on and get past it, and some people either accept it or they just let it derail they're them? Just they, not, they're not ready 
to make the commitment to say, wait a minute, there's effort to be exercised in my advancement. I know a lot of people in my life who just would rather, I don't want to say blue pill, red pill, you know, but... They just conform. Some, some people just don't want to fight. Mm. It's, they just don't want to fight. For instance, I, I've seen, and I, this is not, I'm not disparaging people who are so fearful of what's happening in the in the world in the last two years where they everywhere you go they're on a beach standing knee deep in the ocean with a mask on oh, a, mask and a mask and and a and a, uh, and a welder's shield you know uh god bless those people but let me say something in the same vein that walt disney had his body frozen what does that tell you about Walt Disney? And it points exactly to what the Disney Corporation is today. It's evil. At the very core of the core, Satan, Lucifer, whoever you want to tag, is at the core of the Disney Corporation today. And it started, unfortunately, with one of the most beloved people uh, on the planet, which was Walt Disney. Why do I say that? Because if you really believe in a creative, beautiful, loving force, and if you really believe that you're part of that forever force, when you realize that you're sick and you're terrified of that nothingness that you believe is death, instead of going with it and knowing that you're going to be taken in the arms of the creator however you want to think about it you have yourself frozen because well 50 years from now when they can cure my disease that's going to kill me they'll just thaw me out and cure my disease and i will live forever that's what walt disney believed is it any mystery that his his gem his company all these decades later is evil. So what about the people who have no real faith in the universe? They got no real faith in the creator or whatever deity you want to pray to, which means they got no faith in themselves. They're so fearful. They're so co-opted by the evil people on this planet. And the little thing with the spikes that fly around in the air and go up your nose what do they do? Here, mm, I'll take it. I'll take the special sauce. Left arm, right arm, asshole. Oh, save me. And I'll wear that mask when I'm jogging. And when I'm alone in my car on the way to work, I'll have a mask and a fucking welder shield in my car all by myself. Hmm. And we can do this on Facebook. We can do this. No, we can't do this. You can do this because I'm beyond it. I'm beyond it. And you know something? The Creator gave me an immune system. And, uh, boy, are there videos out there now which the platform would take down that show a panel of discussants that are all sharp physicians that show what we were told over the mm. last year and a half. It ain't necessarily so. John, you could almost say that the higher power might also have something to do with when something comes into our life that's not so pleasant, a thorn or whatever kind of thorn it might be. And because the higher power wants us to become something yeah. that we are not yet sure. there for, whether we're ready for it or not. So when a struggle comes into your life, you're not supposed to quit. You have to somehow turn on that switch and fight like hell right. to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. And then maybe when you're done and you've made it to the other side and you made it through the woods, maybe that's the person you're supposed to be. Yeah. Of you know? Course. So to me, right, and I know you understand this, uh, the way I see it, and not everybody's life is the same, you know, the, uh, the multi, multi billionaire, trillionaire adventurers are never going to get pushed to be better or greater than what they are 
because these people believe they're here, they own the third dimension, and they can't be any better than they already are. That's a sad state of affairs. It really is. So just like a prize fighter or a UFC fighter or a basketball football player or or a, a, anybody who's really proficient at what they do, a musician, a race car driver, chess, anything, think about all of the hours and all of the stress that they put upon themselves honing their skill, getting better, you know, getting themselves to a point where they become invincible. And life is a training ground to prepare you for invincibility. That's how I look at it. Mm. But boy, it's tough taking the lumps along the way. <laughs> hey, no prize fight is easy, right, John? Right. You're going to, no matter, even if you win or lose, you're going to take a couple lumps oh. along the way. Well, and, and that's my point. So if you could somehow, with every dark cloud, there literally is a silver lining. There is. I mean, and for whatever reason we have to go through, what we have to go through, yeah. I believe it's all part of that journey to get us to be the person we're supposed to be. Right. Now, I know going through my struggles in life, I'm definitely not the same person as I went into those struggles. And at the time, you can't really see it. You don't understand it. But I guess the message is to just get strong and to just understand why everything happened the way it is. I mean, along the way, sometimes our struggles are intertwined with other people's struggles. And you get kind of mixed up. And now there's two or three people in your life. Oh, yeah. And you're like saying like, well, what the hell's going on here? Right. But and those people fall by the wayside. They're not strong enough to fight. You know, and like, well, listen, there's only one champ, right? But there's a, a heavyweight class, a lightweight class. And as long as you're in the top 10 and you're, you might not be the best at it, but you know what? You're a fighter. And what you have to do is somehow find a way through that maze of those issues coming at you and say, you know what? If I have to go one more time, right? If I have to deal with one more set of issues to get to the other side, well, damn it. Bring it on. Yeah, Let's go. What's that old expression about wasted talent? Is that there's no Bronx tale. No, well, but I've seen it. I think uh, there's no greater. Yeah, I think crime uh, than I think wasted it was a talent. Line and the scent of a woman also. Oh, okay. About it, I mean, you know, it's a famous right. old saying that's very useful. It, it's there's no. I don't know what. No greater shame. Something mm. to that gist, right? Mm. Than wasted talent. talent. Right. Every single one of us, somewhere, when you peel the layers of that onion, somewhere hidden inside mm. is a phenomenal cosmic talent because we are in the universe, but the universe is also inside of us, which is why Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Mm. So we all have a supernatural talent, and it would be supernatural when you think of our talents with the perspective that we're just flesh and blood and bone. Mm. We're much, much bigger and greater than that. So, you know, um, wasted talent would be that person that just turns into a marshmallow and says, light me on fire. Me. <laughs> Roast me. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm really going up in smoke, blow me off have, and then eat me. Have you... <laughs> Okay. Have you ever watched somebody? It doesn't have to be somebody close to you, John, but have you ever seen, you know, somebody talk to you about a struggle yeah. and then you watch them and little by little, instead of them getting stronger or, hey, how you doing today? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're doing okay. Right. But you just watch them fade. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you ever, and you wish you could oh, do good. something or say something and you try, but you watch them and you're like, I guess they just don't have it in you. They're about to turn into that marshmallow or crawl into a ball. And I think, by and large, not everybody, but, but for the most part, those are the people. I'm going to say something that's going to make people laugh or scratch their head. or kind of, you know, Probably a little bit of both. But it's been noted that people who talk to themselves always seem to have an interesting perspective on a predicament that helps them get out of a predicament. Hmm. And I say, and I didn't make this up, people who talk to themselves are really reaching out to their higher selves. Because otherwise, who the fuck are you talking to? Who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah. You know, I mean, so 
Oh, I definitely, when I'm alone in my house or in my car, if I have something that's really like gnawing at me, oh, I discuss it outwardly, verbally, which means the NSA has all of my inner secrets because they're out I, there. I'm talking to myself and meanwhile, the cell phone's in the car and it's, you know, they've got my innermost thoughts, but I am talking to my higher self. And how do I know? Because over the last, I don't know, 11 or 12 years, my higher self communicates back with me. So, anyway. Well, well, John, I think we're going to alchemize. But I want to dedicate this episode today to you, my 50-year friend. Because I've watched you go through your career and go through a lot of tough times. And you know what? You never quit. And whether you knew it or not, I'm sure a lot of other people are watching you. I'm pointing at the screen even though you're right there. <laughs> but I just want to thank you for the inspiration, for teaching me never to quit. Phil, Give me a little love. Geez, That's what I'm talking well, about. You make me cry. I, bro, it's, it's real. Please. Um, alchemize. No, what do I say? Well, I kind of alchemized the episode, kind of. Or did, did I not? You did. No, okay. you did. You did. But yeah, I, look. Every time we alchemize something, it may seem a bit redundant, but, you know, it's tough to reinvent the wheel. And alchemization is sprinkling the Holy Spirit over a tough issue. It, that's exactly what it is, mm. which is why we call this podcast The Jersey Alchemist. Spot on. Are, are we perfect? No. Do I hope that we entertain you? Yes. Do I hope you are educated and learn something by us? Yes. Do I hope that the discussion can elevate you, which really means to help expand your consciousness? Bingo. That's what it's all about. So no matter how tough it gets, don't give up. Don't turn into a marshmallow and say, throw me into the charcoal. Don't do that. You're bigger. You're, you're better than that. You're a child of... The creator, you're a fractal of the magnanimous creator. And therefore, help yourself, alchemize your life. And when you think you're well on the way to becoming your own alchemist, then you're going to turn back just like your future self, your higher self. And you are going to teach others how to alchemize the garbage that comes their way in this life. Mm. And I like to say there's an old so saying, John, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Absolutely. If you like what we're doing on the Jersey Alchemist, press like, follow. Subscribe, people, and I'm going to say it again. Um, all sorts of podcasters all over the Internet are being shot down by the platform. Why? Because the platform is owned by by a parent company that is controlled by an intel agency that's trying to screw you, to silence you, to do what the ancient Romans did. If they didn't like what came out of your mouth, they cut your tongue out. This is just 2,000 years later. Instead of physically cutting our tongues out, they just shadow ban. They take our viewership away. Maybe people are still watching. I'm not going to stop. But our analytics show that the platform is messing with us. And when you watch inspirational speakers and truthers, specifically truthers, they'll tell you they're getting shot down left and right. Don't let that happen, people. Share the Jersey Alchemist. Talk about it. Start your own podcasts, but uh, reach deep, look within, remember something. You're a child of God. Don't ever give up. God mm, bless. Love it. God bless you. Johnny, excellent job as usual. Till next Thank time, you, people. Thank Peace. You.